about this morning. <laughs> All right, hey everybody, and welcome to Chew Stream, where we talk about art and life as an artist. I'm your host, Bobby Chu, and today is the 12th week of the 90 minute art challenge. This is gonna be fantastic. I wanna give you some instructions, okay? You're going to create a 90 minute illustration, an illustration in 90 minutes based on the image given. Um, this week's image is from what was it called? Memoirs of a Geisha or something? Uh, anyways, it's Monday. <laughs> My brain is not working too well. On any other day, I would totally know the... I think, yeah, Memoirs of a Geisha. Uh, wonderful movie. Beautiful costumes. If you have any questions, I'm going to be doing a couple of things here. I have Zoom. You can go into the details of the video and find the Zoom link there and join the few uh, attendees that are on Zoom. And that way you can, you know, ask me stuff live and things like that. But you can also go on to slido.com and ask me questions there. I'll try to answer as many as possible. Okay, so um, yeah, bef before we get started, I also just wanted to go to... Um, Actually, let's just get started. Okay, hey everybody, there we go. There's the painting for you. And uh, today's painting is gonna be a good one. This one is a really fun one. Hmm. Okay, how am I? I see this like weird highlight. Okay, there we go, that did something. All right. So, uh, yeah, before we go on to that, I did want to also show a couple awesome paintings that uh, people have been handing in and stuff like that. People have been submitting because you can submit your art anywhere on social media. Hashtag it a uh, 90 minute art challenge and I'll try to find as many as possible. OK, so why don't we go to that? Let's try something new. I'm going to do split screen. You can still see the painting going. And uh, this is the Tumblr account that I'll be posting every challenge. This is next week's challenge. Alexander Jacob, uh, French painter, 1876 to 1972. A nice full life of 96 years. Uh, but what a beautiful painting. And this painting, can we just talk about this for a bit? It doesn't feel like it's from the 1800s, does it? It doesn't feel like it's from the uh, 1900s, early 1900s. It feels like concept art that would be done now, a beautiful illustration that would be done now. And let's go through some of these fantastic um, submissions. This was from last week's. So you can see the bird here. Uh, this was what everybody painted from. Wonderful job there. This one heavyweight <laughs> 90 minute art challenge heavyweight over here jeez incredible incredible another beautiful one lovely and then oh so cool so dramatic i love this i love this you know and you could see the progression which i absolutely 
absolutely love about this painting, this study as well. You can see all of the previous studies before this person got to this one. And you could tell that this person actually learned quite a bit. There's a lot of progression just from that one study. Very cool, different take. And again, a different take, a nice yummy turkey leg. Nice and fun. This one, um, I guess this is a progression video. Very cool. It's very cool to see that as well. And a beautiful dragon inspired by the photo. And a lovely landscape one, uh, you know, flying over top of the city. Wonderful. Really great submissions. Holy smokes. Like, look at this one. Wow. And then this one, lovely. This is so great. And this person matched the same kind of lighting too. It's coming from slightly um, underneath, coming upwards a little bit, or coming from very much the side anyways. So wonderful job, everybody. That was very cool. Okay, so uh, yeah, the painting. Let's talk about this painting for a second here. There's a lot of things going on. And this painting that I'm showing you here, I felt like it was important to show you uh, 90 minutes, no fast forward. All the pauses are still left in there. I think at one point I might have gotten up off of my table, forgot to even press pause. And so it just pauses for a bit. But this is reality, folks. 90 minutes. This is what a 90-minute art challenge really, really looks like. Okay, so hopefully everybody can enjoy. Hopefully everybody will also you know, have some fun uh, painting and drawing and challenging themselves to this 90-minute art challenge. Now, uh, before I go to some questions here, I want to uh, ask the panel or the, the attendees, if you guys have any questions, please raise your hand. I'll hand you a mic, and then uh, you can ask a question for everybody in Zoom. Okay, and while people are kind of gathering their thoughts, I will go to Slido and uh, find some questions there as well. Oh, but um, yeah, before we go on too far, actually, I've got some stuff I could talk about here. Uh, Thursday, I've been doing these portfolio reviews They've been super fun for me. Uh, you know, I used to teach in college about 15 years ago. I stopped or so. Um, it's fun. It's really fun for me to help people and to interact with them. Um, you know, it's one thing to do streams, but in a sense, it almost feels like I'm just talking into the void. Uh, and so this was fun. And so how do you submit your own piece of art? You just post four pieces of art with the hashtag school is in portfolio. If you want to tag me as well, it definitely helps me to uh, you know, have you on my radar and submit them by June 16th. So that's by the end of tomorrow. Okay, if you submit your stuff, then I will go over as many as possible. And then next week is this stream. Uh, this is going to be really fun, too. Okay, so, yeah. And participants in the Zoom call, there's only four, 12 of us. You know, um, if you want a mic, just let me know. I think I'll give a mic back to Jenna. She was saying hi earlier. And Gabriel... Just put up his hand, give him a mic as well. Yeah, so feel free to unmute yourselves if you guys want to talk or hang out, you know, talk about whatever. How do you, I think, yeah, I think you have to unmute yourself. Did I just mute you? 
Okay, sorry. It was exactly the right timing. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here's Jenna. Hey, Jenna. Hey. I just want to say uh, you're definitely not speaking too much into the void. So you're, you're doing good there. <laughs> awesome. You, um, you know, sometimes it's just like, what is... <laughs> What am I doing here? <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that feeling. <laughs> yeah, what do you do, Jenna? I'm actually a level three tech for uh, uh, technically a, a bank, but <laughs> uh, I work on their virtual computing stuff. So unfortunately for me, far, far away from the art world, uh, farther than I'd like. Oh, well, you know, uh, as long as you hold on to that goal, Yep, that's the that's the dream there. And hey, yeah. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, it's like my mom. I swear she could have been an awesome artist, uh, but she never pursued it. So I, I hope one day you can really you know pursue it and see how far you can go. Baby steps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so let's go to one of these questions here and yeah if you want to chime in about anything jenna feel absolutely free so this question is from cj russoto and he asks how would you get the most out of your time when you can only draw in the morning between breaks and only a few hours at night i have pain on the wrists oh no well definitely take care of yourself your wrist you know, because a, heart, a healthy art career is nothing without a healthy, uh, without health, <laughs> you know, without a healthy, I was going to say without health and a healthy personal life too. I just want to add that in there, you know, but um, before, back in the day, I, I literally had a goal of rolling out of bed it you know right into my desk and start painting and drawing and not moving until i couldn't keep myself up anymore and i'd go to sleep of course that was a horrible move because that really really started to build up over years of just knots and horrible posture and things like that so don't do that you know think about it in the long run in the long run we can't draw forever. We gotta stop, sharpen our pencil, you know? Sharpen our mind. Take some time just for yourself where you turn everything off. That's, that's something that I highly recommend because we're so used to being tapped in so much, right? Like, um, take some time for yourself. I do this often, perfect morning. I do this for about 45 minutes. I just sit on the balcony. I have a guided meditation tape that I listen to, where it just tells me to focus on different parts of uh, the things around me, my body, stuff like that, and gets you into this nice place where all of your mental garbage now can start to leak out of your brain. That's literally what it feels like to me, right? And when things leak out of your brain, all of a sudden more good stuff can come in and i kid you not my best ideas come from after meditation and i think it's because when we're not meditating we have all these little like artifacts of like thoughts and things like this in our heads and so they come in and out constantly and when there's always things on the stage of my uh, cerebral co cortex here right and uh, it's hard to focus on anything else with you know a good amount of intensity or good amount of uh strength so the best thing is to get you know practice getting rid of the things on our kind of mental stage there so that we can have others uh, join in new ideas i don't know if anybody has anything to say about that but uh that's something that I, I do not, naturally, I do not like meditating. I actually hate it because it's like, why am I wasting my time? That's exactly how I felt for years. 
Why am I wasting my time right now? I could be doing this. I could be doing that. But we're in it for the long run. We're in it for the 30, 40 years, 50 years of painting and drawing and all this stuff. So um, that's, I feel like that's the path to go in the long, the long way about it uh, or going for the long run, right? Just like in, in marathons you would run differently in a marathon than you would in a sprint, right? And if we want to sprint, we can sprint and we could get a nice head start, but we won't be able to actually make it to the end because we'll just tire ourselves out. Same thing. I see a whole bunch of people in um, on YouTube today, fantastic hundred some odd people. Let me know where you're from. I'll give you a shout out. Nice. And I see more people joining in uh, Zoom as well. If you have a question, just raise your hand. I'll hand you a mic. Okay. You know, um, that kind of reminds me about something. More opportunities have come to me because I have always had a habit of uh, striking up conversations with people I don't know. It's been a wonderful, like, just happenstance that because of that, I've been able to meet so many more people, create so many more opportunities. It's not just even talking to me. It could be while you're talking to me, somebody else hears, somebody else connects with that, and then they reach out to you, and that stuff starts to form. Sometimes it's not who you're talking to right now that's going to be important. It's because you're talking to this person right now, later on they might introduce you to so-and-so that will become a huge, big difference for you. Um, I have this story when I was starting off uh, there's a couple times oh shoot awesome there's actually I didn't even see there's questions in zoom okay I will get to these questions that were typed in zoom that's fantastic so uh, in the very beginning I'm doing these uh, conventions there's this one super famous artist that i would love to talk to love to get to know and every time i he came by the table a couple of times and every time he came by the table i said hi and then he you know quickly nodded walked away i never really understood that until things in my career started to pick up and i'd walk through conventions and you know, people would say hi, I'd stop. And then, you know, a lot of people, they just want to have nice conversations, which is fantastic. And some people, I f feel, wanted to keep you there at the table, right? And didn't really have that much interesting stuff to talk to you about. So then I started to subconsciously, you know, just try to keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Anybody that tries to start a conversation, hi, okay, great, keep moving. Uh, one day this little girl comes to the table, looks at my art, looks at K and I, you know, our prints and everything. And, and I strike up a conversation with her. She's like about 10 or something like that. Maybe, maybe actually, no, like 13, somewhere around there. Anyways, strike up this conversation and, um, end up giving her a print. Just because just cause she was cool, it seemed like a nice person, I really liked the art, but she's only a teenager, gave her a print. Little did I know that she was the daughter of the guy that I was just talking about, the superstar that I would love to get to know. Years later, you know, like uh, if I email him, he emails back. If I text him, he texts back, you know, and been able to have long conversations with him 
visit his home and stuff like that. It's wonderful. All because I was talking to somebody that had that I thought had nothing to do with art at all. Just a complete stranger. Okay, so we have these wonderful, wonderful uh, questions. First question. Okay, so this question is about Lightbox Expo. Is Lightbox Expo a paid ticket? There will be a suggested price. We definitely want to make this something that we can do over and over again. So um, there will be a price. However, we are going to have a little experiment. We're going to have a suggested price. Okay, and you can dial that down to zero and come in free if you like. Because it's a crazy time right now. And, you know, this whole event is something that we feel will be very necessary for the art community in general. So we want to do this and not exclude anybody. Coronavirus, a lot of people lost their jobs, things like that. We still welcome you, okay? If you can pay, please pay. That would really help and helps to support what we're doing and all the man hours, all the hours that we've been putting into this thing. But yes, it will be, uh, you can dial it all the way to free. Okay, uh, next question here is in router tulp's conceptual character design class router mentioned function as one of the tools for building character design i still don't forget it or i still don't get it oh okay can you give some other examples besides router gave uh, one example which which is the character is slow Okay, well, um, yeah, this is a really good one. So, for example, the function of, and it's been a while since I watched Vouter's class, but I could talk about it from my own point of view. The function of our hands, what is that? The functions of our hands, what is that? Truly. You can say you know, to shake hands, to point at stuff, whatever. Essentially, it's a grabber. It grabs things, right? And once we think about the function of this thing, now we are able to design it on a whole nother level. If we keep the whole entire goal of we need to design a grabber, then all of a sudden we can say, okay, well, um, where would the padding go? Would it go on the back of the hand or on the front of the hand? the front of the grabber, right? That all of a sudden, because we know the function of this now, now we're able to uh, more intelligently design where padding would go. Where would hinges go? How would hinges be? They don't necessarily have to be knuckles. They don't have to be joints. They just need to be a hinge to bend your hand, to bend the grabber. Now all of a sudden you could picture bolts on the side here, perhaps, if you like, right? And now, again, we're designing based off of uh, function, which can be really cool. Um, a big part for me, like when I'm doing a character for film, I read the script and anytime the character does anything, I write it down. So for example, Men in Black 3, there's a big fish that was found in the Chinese restaurant. And that was my alien fish that I worked on. In the script, it says it fights Will Smith. It runs around. It slaps him in the face. I don't know if it slapped him in the face in the, in the film, but it said it in the script, the one that I got, and spat in his face. So there's a bunch of functions. It needs to be able to run. It needs to be able to slap. It needs to be able to spit, right? And so that's why we need to list these things down because we got to make sure we hit all of these functions and that this character can do all of these things. And of course, that is a huge tool for building a character, building anything.
Wow. Awesome to see so many people that have come out. So big shouts out to, we got Germany, Hong Kong, Belgium, Turkey, Earth, <laughs> Brazil, Puerto Rico, Thailand, uh, Israel, Iran, Germany again, Ukraine, St. Louis, India, Brazil, um, West Virginia, North Carolina, Colombia, hello from the moon, okay, uh, Czech Republic, Costa Rica, LA, Romania, a whole bunch of places, Argentina, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, great, so let's go to the other, the other uh, questions here. This one's a good one too. Uh, anonymous attendee asks, why some of schools and classes have no subtitles? I found it hard to listen to the course. So why are, have some of the schools and classes have no subtitles? Because we're still working on it. It's definitely something that we plan on doing. It's just that we've used a bunch of different services, some automated services to extrapolate the dialogue and to put it into written form, but they're not accurate. I, we, we have yet to find one that was accurate. And so because we want to do this properly, we have people to actually listen to it and write it all out, which is why it's been taking a while. Um, or we would have it dictated and then we'd have to proofread it with the video a lot. And then there's also things like Say an artist says uh, this and this and this and then says uh, 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 or says a bunch of stuff and then stops and re-says it in a better way. Do you really want to read those subtitles? Uh, 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 um, you know, and going back? No. So there's that as well. It's actually a much bigger job than initially anticipated. And we also plan on doing translations in the future as well, just to let everybody know. Okay. So let's see, about half an hour has passed and you can see a good amount of that background has been painted. It's a good time to think about where you're at at this point. The other part about this is that um, you can see that I'm approaching this differently. I'm approaching this straight to color. I found that to be kind of important because um, I've had questions in the past where it talks about should you paint from black and white first? Should you do monochromatic first before you go into color? Um, I don't think there's a right approach. You know, it really depends on what you want to do. So. This one is straight to color. And a little caveat here. The brushes that I'm using for this are all Tonko House brushes. I downloaded them from his class, from their class, uh, Painting with Light and Color with Tonko House. And they're fantastic. You get so much, um, you get so much out of every brush stroke just because of that whole textural feeling, which I really enjoyed. All right, so why don't we go to a Slido question since we've been doing so many um, Zoom questions here. So what's the technical, or what is the, or excuse me, CJ Russoto, when is the time to do technical practice and when is the time to master studies and when is the time to produce art? I generally like the whole concept of study, practice, and yeah, study and practice more than producing your kind of like final piece of art, your art for films, your art for your portfolio, stuff like that. But not to say that you can't put in studies into your portfolio, that could be good too, depending on the study. Uh, now. The thing about this is that 
that doesn't mean that <clears throat> your studies are just studies and that's it. You know, like I constantly double up the things that I have to do. Just like this, I'm, I'm doubling up uh, this study with a stream and tripling it up by answering a bunch of questions for people, hopefully helping some people out there. Uh, and then uh, maybe the whole entire challenge, like holding a challenge, all of a sudden that, maybe that's like a fourth kind of reason. And that to me has always been the trick. Like how do I, first it's like, what do I want to do? Then it's like, how do I, set things up so I could do more of this, right? And if you can do that constantly, then you'll slowly find yourself doing exactly what you want to do. That's awesome. Um, and another big thing that's always helped me is to just always kind of strive to do something that I've never done before. You know, if you can get in the habit of constantly exploring new things, new ideas, uh, it'll lead to a lot of good things. I see a hand raised in Zoom. I'll give you a mic, Melanie. If you have any say, anything to say, just let me know. Hello. Hi. Hello. Your voice is a tiny bit low, so if you want to oh, okay. speak up a little bit. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Perth in Australia. Oh, fantastic. What time is it over there? Uh, it's currently 10.32 p.m. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's just a 12-hour difference then. That's. I yeah. thought it was like something a little more tricky, like 15-hour difference or something like that. Oh, yeah. If you live in the Eastern States, it's probably something like that. Oh, okay. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, yeah. So my question was, um, I've always had this problem where when I go to study from a reference, I tend to just copy it, not mm -hmm. really understand what's going on there. I did recently start doing the Robert Kondo Dai Tsutsumi painting with lighting and color class, and it's definitely helping with this problem. But I was wondering how you go how you go about uh, studying from a reference? What goes through your mind when you go to look at your reference? Yeah, well, it, you know, studying, whether it's studying from a reference, studying from life, studying from photo, you know, whatever, uh, that's kind of like going to the gym for me. You know, so like when you go to the gym, how do you go to the gym? Well, it depends on what day. Depends on what I'm trying to, uh, trying to work on. And I think that is perhaps the best answer I could give you, Melanie, is to start by thinking about what it is you want to work on. And if you want to work on the whole entire idea of creating things out of your head, then I would study things in other ways. For example, here, let me show you. Let me see. I was thinking maybe I might need to... Um, be able to set things up so I could do a split screen. So, uh, yeah, here's a little something that I'm working on currently, right? And it's just a, I don't know what it is. It's kind of like a lion, uh, dog kind of pig kind of thing. Just really sketching for fun. Used to be this. Right, and if, um, let's see, hopefully I don't show anything too secret here, but <laughs> say I, oh yeah, this is the one previous, and this was last week's challenge. You know, so I used the reference from last week Let's see here, right? I used this reference from last week to do this. 
um, that definitely forces you to really understand what's happening here to apply it to a different kind of subject, right? And if that's too far of a stretch, you can start off by doing a character of this guy. Like, say, it has a really long neck, and that's kind of funny, right? So it has this giant super long neck, and then the wings are back here. Like, um, let me just do a little... little example what is this blue line so say the neck is actually like this right and then you have your wings here your wings here see this would be a much easier kind of uh, step and then if you can go way beyond this, then you could go way beyond it. But that could be funny just doing that. Does that make sense? Yep. Awesome. And then if you want to go beyond this, which is what I'm starting to do, I'm taking this now. I'm starting to do this. I'm starting to do this kind of a thing. And then what I was planning on doing was taking this and combining it with a previous um, study and bringing it into this kind of a lighting scheme. That's what I'm planning to do with, with the, this one. Oops, with this one right here. You know, so now you can see how those kinds of uh, challenges, those kinds of things can definitely help to kind of bring your your painting to another level of like coming straight out of your head yeah so thanks for thanks for the, your question it's a great question yeah thank you all right so why don't we go to another oh a couple more people putting up their hands great awesome hey joe I see you have a mic. Hey, hello. Can you hey, hear how's it going? Uh, it's going okay. I just had a question about, uh, I guess, my art journey in general. I don't know exactly what I want to do or what path I want to go down. All I know is that I want to make art for the people in my family who didn't get to and for me. Mm. Um, I don't really see any other way to do it but i don't know what to do it makes any sense you're not like the career what the career path oh okay okay um like uh yeah that's a that's a bit of a tricky one do you okay so let's break it down here are you interested in like entertainment kind of art or like fine art? So entertainment would be like... I'd French... say more entertainment, yeah. Okay. So the major food groups of entertainment is really like illustration, like Magic the Gathering kind of stuff, uh, young adult uh, art book or, you know, books, book covers. Um, then you have games and then you have animation or live action. And then those have subcategories of television or feature. So games, TV movies, or illustration? Where do you kind of see yourself going there? See, I don't know. It really, it really just depends. I, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm behind or not because, um, so I'm 16 and I, definitely ahead if you're asking these kind of questions i just want to be good enough to support myself <laughs> well um, you definitely okay let me break it down to you like this uh joe you definitely are not behind you're far ahead if you're starting to think these kind of questions already at 16 years old you're very far ahead so good for you 
Uh, I got my start when I was 17 by accident. You know, I didn't even know. <laughs> I just kind of was doing the things I wanted to do and ended up designing toys. Um, but if you already have an idea where it's like, I want to do art, I don't know what aspect of it, it's fantastic. Um, I would say just pick one where you think you wouldn't hate and really start to laser focus on that. You know, really start to laser focus on that until you can get that goal, achieve that goal, and then move on to another goal if you want or keep pursuing that. You know, that's the main thing. And the other thing is, um, don't think that because you're 16, you have to wait. The whole entire world will tell you you need to wait. I'll tell you that that's just the world's way of holding back all of these teenagers that want to do, uh, that want to already start their careers. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like a lot of these jobs, job postings, they'll say three years of experience. They'll say four years of experience. They don't totally mean that. If you hand in a portfolio that's killer and you don't even have any experience yet, they still might call you up. Um, it's only to keep to keep some sort of like hurdle there that stops the flood of interest coming in. Um, so for you, man, time is the most precious thing and you got tons of it. I would suggest uh, I would suggest thinking about just one thing, narrowing it down to one thing. So you know, we could do this right now if you want, Joe. I mean, we we can try, but uh... okay. Well, the the hardest thing is sticking to that one thing until you learn it and you learn it well. Okay. Yeah, I totally. I've... Yeah. I've got some uh, buddies that are actually already in the industry, but I feel like taking advice from them, they kind of pull me in like so many different directions with like, uh, just by like even their ways of studying art, like it's, it's all so different. You know what I mean? And many of them are very legitimate. You know, the whole entire thing is that I see kind of being a hindrance to more and more people like in back in back in my day you know it was like no choices you didn't really have many choices now we have tons of choices and we have too many back in the day you found a good choice you stuck with that choice until you really learned it well and that was pretty much it you know uh now you have so many so the main thing is uh there's more than one right choice. So the real choice here is whether or not you can stick to one of those good choices without kind of going off somewhere else, wasting a whole bunch of time there, wasting a whole bunch of time there. And in the end, you didn't really learn that first choice even that well. That's the big trap that... I see like so many people going into so many people will tell me oh yeah yeah I took uh, 20 schoolism classes in a year I'm like oh shoot yeah that's a bad sign <laughs> you know that's a really bad sign um, the person that goes yeah I really hunkered down and did this one course for the entire year here's my portfolio those are the ones where I'm excited to open up their portfolio because they really leveled up instead of just dabbled and sampled things. And for so you, if, if you huh? can hunker down to one, one goal first and take some of that you know, professional advice about how to study and pick one of those ways, right? Maybe a couple of those ways. And that's it. And you just hunker down and you just study that way for a super long time until you're really good at it, a few months of just constant, then you, you might move on to a different way of studying, right? But 
you see the key here is to keep your attention focused on one thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what I would do if I was you. If I was at your age, I, I would be so like laser focused on one thing at a time, just building these incredibly strong artistic tools, you know, structure, lighting, whatever, hard yep. bodied surfaces. Uh, yeah. You're in a good place, my friend. Thank you. You're welcome. And hey, uh, Bobby, you yeah. mind if I add in for Joe there? Too? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Uh, hey, Joe. Um, also, just kind of wanted to add in there, too. Uh, just do your best to also not lose that spark. Because it, it just kind of, like, even if it's just picking up an art book from a movie that you liked recently, really just... Yeah, that'll give you tons of ideas and inspiration there too of different kinds of paths to explore and give an option to <laughs> yeah i i 100 percent agree and like uh that's a very important point too because again it's like we're constantly bombarded with distractions right and it's like it's so easy to get taken off of our our path or that thing that we're concentrating on right on yeah i don't know if i'll necessarily have to struggle with um falling off the path uh just finding the right path to a certain thing is the thing the thing but, is um, right, right. i feel like you have a whole bunch of right paths in front of you it's just that you, it may be um you're putting too much emphasis on like is this the right path? Uh, the, uh, there's a whole bunch of right paths. And just because you take one doesn't mean that you can't take the other later. You could totally do that. Like for me, I think it was like, um, I started off really concentrating on layouts. And then I got a job doing background drawings for this uh, show called Rescue Heroes like years ago. I don't know if anybody knows that show, but um, you know, then I realized I don't like doing layouts. I don't like doing environments. Got into characters, right? And started life drawing like crazy, really starting to understand how to draw people. Then from there, animals. And then from there, painting. And then from there, live action concepts so that's a different kind of thinking a different kind of painting uh, and then from there creating my own tv show each one of these is like a different completely different path right some are more related than others but like going from those things to creating a tv show that's that's a serious difference in in goals but I'm saying in order to do all of these things, just don't pick them all up at once. Pick one up at a time and really get obsessed about it as much as you can until you got that thing, until you really, really obtain that thing and, and now you're in a really good spot. Then you can decide, do I want to keep going on this path? Do I want to make another TV show? Uh, that was you know, one of the decisions I had to make, do I want to concentrate on trying to make another TV show? Um, end up being, I want to do an event, <laughs> Lightbox Expo. So, yeah. Why don't we go to another question here? This is actually a good one. This one is, um, this one is about Lightbox Expo. What will Lightbox Expo 2020 look like online? Will there be portfolio reviews? Yes. Will there be webinars? Yes. Drawing demos? Yes. Drawing challenges together? Yes. Drawing contests? There's already a drawing uh, challenge on ArtStation, which is the Lightbox Expo um, challenge. It's a mystery box. And that challenge on ArtStation, I was told, has the most sponsors, the most prizes ever for our art station challenge so there's one of those we might have some other uh, contests as well figure drawing um unsure 
some career expo from some studios or anything else. So a lot of studios are going to be involved, just like in the live one. We had in the live one, we had like every studio, every major studio there was, there is out there. You know, we had uh, we had Pixar, Netflix, Illumination, Disney, DreamWorks, Weta Workshops, Riot Games. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on. And trust me when I tell you, it's not to be missed. Lightbox Expo Online will not, it's not to be missed. And everybody that misses it, they are truly going to miss it because a lot of it, is just gonna happen at that time during that weekend and then that's it all right um oh here's a question from jenna this is your question jenna so how or where do you start uh do you start back up if you feel you've slid far down the out of practice and lack of confidence pits how or where do you start? I'm sure it's terribly phrased there too. Uh, basically the used to be super into like, you couldn't get me off of a computer or, you know, my sketchbook, any of that. Uh, and of course with uh, kind of what you're touching on earlier, all the distractions with everything else, uh, having to go and find a job to make money to, continue down there uh i'm super or at least i feel super out of practice and i found little things here and there to keep me going and kind of keep some skill up but of course for a project wise now it's the most intimidating thing <laughs> yeah i bet i bet um well one thing that's always helped me is scheduling in these things especially these kind of things that could be moved around anywhere in your schedule. You know, those are even more important to make sure that we don't drop them because they're so kind of vulnerable. They don't need to be done. Uh, once you have a schedule, once you can commit to a certain time, whatever, um, I, I think it's really about turning those other parts of your brain off, Jenna. You know, you make that decision and you just start doing it. And as we all know, if you can commit to painting or drawing for five minutes, uh, it's so easy to go for 20, half an hour, an hour, right? It's like once you just start. So that's, that would be what I would concentrate on is just like sitting my butt down there and just starting. Uh, as opposed to, um, I have this huge project and all this stuff. You know, when you start to think about it like that, it can be very overwhelming. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So <laughs> we have a Sir Igor, the Nervous Knight on Slido. And the Nervous Knight asks... I've been suffering I've been suffering from in sorry I've been suffering in I'm thinking anxiety for some time now. I can't properly sit and study. I always feel the need to run run from focus any tips. Um perhaps exercise. You know like a part of me exercising is to tire myself out <laughs> so i'll stop a lot of those thoughts like what what jenna was saying and um and a little bit of like what joe's question was all about you know just stopping those thoughts from constantly polluting my mind um anxiety could be one of them right that could totally be one of them also, there's like this, they say there's this natural chemical that will go through your brain, right? Endorphins will run through your brain when you're exercising hard. I believe that. I definitely feel great after exercising a bit, um, especially getting exhausted. As much as I thought 
that would make me more tired, it actually didn't. You know, it just, in the long run, it makes you have more energy and more energy. So that's, and then of course, of course, meditation. And the last thing is think about what you're focusing on. What are you focusing on? And do any of those things give you anxiety? Because I know a huge part of why I'm not feeling anxiety most of the time is because I'm concentrating on the right things. You know, to throw an event like Lightbox Expo, that takes a huge amount of resources and a huge gamble. Will 10,000 people come? I don't know, <laughs> right? But you got to just do it and believe and try. Um, you know, if I concentrate on the wrong things, I would have had probably just like a nervous breakdown uh, trying to create Lightbox Expo. So I think perhaps a big part of your anxiety is from concentrating on the wrong things. The secret freedom we all have, you know, is the choice to really feel how we want to feel, uh, direct our attention where we want to direct it. Uh, you know, no matter what happens in our lives, how anybody treats us, uh, no matter what's going on, in the end, we do have a choice of how we want to feel, how we want to react to something. None of it is um, involuntary, right? You have complete evidence of this with things like stories of the, of the Holocaust. Uh, I forget the person's name. There's one in particular that really struck me. He, he was uh, a university professor, I believe, before the Holocaust. And then during the, the concentration camps, he would think about his lectures to his students after this whole entire experience was over, right? And it empowered him with um, the ability to act from within instead of reacting to his outside circumstances. And that he said multiple times, like, that got him through that experience. And if that could help somebody go through a, a horrific experience like a Holocaust, it could definitely help us. It's definitely a real thing. Awesome. I see a whole bunch of uh, participants now with their hands up. I'm going to hand you a mic. If you have a question, just let me know. Uh. Hi. Hi. Who's this? Uh, Shu Hang. Shu Hang. Hi. Nice to meet you. Uh, you'll just have to speak a little loud. Oh yeah. Okay. Wait. Uh, I just wanna ask. Uh, uh like, if you were, uh, how would you get your parents to like trust you that you know what you're doing and going down this path? They don't have to worry about you in the future. Yeah, I I hear you, buddy. More than you know, I think. So, same same problem. Um, but once they saw that I stopped wasting time, once they saw that I was spending all of my time on art, and they saw... That was number one. I remember them just going... Telling me later on, oh yeah, we, we noticed... You stop going out as much. You stop watching TV, TV as much. You stop doing all these things as much. So I think one huge part is, of course, it's common sense. Change the way you are to change how people will react to you. Right? If, you're always, if you always have a bad temper and then you put up that bad temper again, then whoever's around you will react the same way that they did last time. But this time, if you if they are thinking that you're going to get really angry and you don't, then they have no choice but to treat you differently. 
now with your parents, it's like now that they see that you are so concentrated on art, they will have no choice but to treat you differently. And that's, that's how it goes. And then once you do that, and you start to get better, and they can see that you're getting better, then they start treating you differently again. And that's exactly what happened to me. But the last thing I want to tell you is that um, all these, these challenges in your life that look like they're stemming from your parents, as long as you uh, stay on there, stay, you know, stay vigilant, um, those impediments right now, those challenges will only strengthen, I swear to you, they will only strengthen your career, your, your trajectory so much more, right? Because, because you, you took it on and you got through it, right? Like waves coming back at you will make you a stronger swimmer than if you're just swimming in the swimming pool with no waves at all. Hi, sir. Yes, who's this? Uh, yeah, this is Anish Karan, sir. I'm from India. Hi, Anish. Anish? Uh, yeah. So my question is like, uh, I am currently now 22 years old. And uh, so I want to pursue my career in arts. I do character designing. For, so I want to do uh, job in uh, any gaming industry or any animation industry. And so what would be my approach? I am currently also uh, I am currently also holding a job in IT industry. So, uh, so like, well, I would work on my portfolio, right? And and how would I work on my portfolio? Well, you know, you could take some classes. That's the easiest way to start improving, um, and then you know, create a portfolio through the, through the assignments, or you could study on your own, study from other people. Um, but I would, hopefully you don't have a huge time limit on your hands. You seem yeah, like you're yeah, still quite yeah. young, 22. Yeah. So yeah, I would, I would start studying one artist at a time, study the hell out of them until I can draw like them as well. So how do you study? Um, just like these studies, don't just draw it once. Draw it seven, eight, ten times until you can do it out of, out of your head. Then can you do the mirror image of it? Then can you do a different version of it? And then you get further and further away from that version until, you know, instead of a crane that you're painting, Maybe you're, you know, painting this weird dog lion thingy, uh, and then you get further and further away. Sir, is the means I'm 22 years so I was on. I mean, parents are also telling me like that this is not the correct age to pursue like going out of this stream and pursue a different. Mm -hmm. I I actually I couldn't hear that part. Uh, actually, I'm 22 years old, so my uh, parents are telling like this is not the correct age to uh, pursue a different goal, changing your uh, stream from computer science to any other stream. Oh, so your parents are, I, I they're for you doing art? Is that what you're saying? No, I mean, uh, they don't uh, want me to pursue art. Uh, I mean, I, uh, for, as a uh, profession now. Right. Because okay, well, you are... know, your parents are not going to live your life. Yeah. Right? It's, and uh, in the very no, end, they love you. They, they're trying to give you advice that will be good for you, for your life. But they don't understand no. that actually if you do well in art, if you do well as an entertainment artist working in games or movies or film, you're making a lot of money and you're doing very well for yourself. 
yeah that's the only problem like uh, so they are telling like uh, there is no not much uh, we cannot uh, make our uh, surviving surviving or amount of money for the survival that we need that we don't have i think they just so don't know the they just don't know i could tell you i could tell you um here's some maybe some figures that you could tell your parents okay if you're if you're doing well in television uh you should be able to say $300 a day and they should not even blink at you they would just be okay sure 300 US dollars a day no problem at least if you get into movies then you could say $600 a day US easily and they shouldn't even blink they should go okay you know you're good that's great let's do it if you're doing uh, character designs for movies you can say $800 or up i know plenty of people that say 1000 i know some people that say more than $1000 a day think about that that's the same pay as a doctor you know that's the same pay as a dentist that's the same pay as so many other things you know and then some people you know they they get paid even more than that so um your parents probably just want the best for you yeah but they probably don't know that actually uh being an artist in entertainment you make a a very good living you can definitely make a huge amazing living and then they might say they might say to you uh anish that oh well they can do it these other people can do it cuz they live in america they live over here yeah, they live yeah, over that, there that that yeah that the i live in toronto If I lived in Indonesia, it wouldn't make any difference because I never go into the studio. It's all online. And I've been doing this for over 15 years. So it's absolutely possible. And then they might say, "Well, all of these other people, they have more experience than you, Anish. You don't have a chance, Anish. There's only like one job for 100 people." while well, 99% of those people don't come on to these streams 99% of these people are trying at about 50% of their actual potential even though they think it's 100% it's not even close the people that decide to try at 100% they are almost always let in unless they're trying at 100% in the wrong way right so that just means that you want to get some guidance or you want to yes. constantly look up and go okay i did all this stuff where am i heading towards with all this stuff if i keep going in this direction where will i end up and if you're constantly doing these things you have way more chance of making it than not making it okay so uh, i and so i also want to know like uh, sometime i also try to do some different other things also like uh, mainly i do uh, character designing only but i also try to go into some 3d modeling also and uh, try trying now currently i'm trying some animation also so should i do uh, i'm, I'm already this? kind of like uh going oh boy looks like you're, you you might be concentrating too many things yeah so Slim it down. Think about one or two things. What are the one or two things if you learned it really well will improve your life the most? And just concentrate on those. Again, if this is like I should change the title of this uh stream to uh you know what should I concentrate on? You know, like that is a a key component there. to be able to just concentrate on a selected few amount of things 
put those blinders on like a like a racehorse, you know, and you're just going straight ahead. You're not looking at this other stuff anymore. Once you make that decision, that's ex that's that's totally one of the giant things that have helped me for all of these years is that I constantly I'll put on those blinders. I don't even want to hear a question asked me. You know, I won't I'll, I'll answer the question or whatever, but generally uh I don't even want to hear any questions asked to me. I just want to concentrate on my thing and just stay laser focused. Right? And because of that yeah. like really I feel like um if your parents just if you kind of had them look into the things that I've done there's nothing different I I am actually a slow learner it's just that I concentrate on one thing at a time and I keep going on that one thing until I get it yeah I uh, I definitely understand your position Anish so thank you for your um your you. question there awesome wow i feel for that dude for sure uh and anybody uh, else in those kind hey, of situations Bobby. yes i hear somebody hey Bobby, can you hear me yes hi what's yeah. your name where are you from uh, hi yeah i'm anton uh I'm from Australia. I'm actually using my wife's Zoom account. <laughs> okay. So don't get confused. Uh, so yeah, I have a question. I heard a lot of times that uh, the best way to progress is to uh, focus on your weaknesses, right? And push through uh, the blocks. Uh, so I'm wondering how would you go about identifying your weaknesses? I don't think about it like that, actually. I, it makes sense, but I think about it in like uh out of all those things that you feel like you want to concentrate on you want to improve on the things that you feel might be your weaknesses out of all of those things if you only picked one or two of them what one or two things do you think would give you the most benefit the most positive change for your art skills for your career whatever that might be Right. It might even be something that you're not concentrating on at all right now. So think about that. And yeah. that's the thing. Like sometimes I start doing study. Right. And I was like, uh, well, my values could use some practice, you know, and my color could use some practice. And then I focus on them. But then I was like, oh, but if only my perspective was a bit better, I could really push it through, you know? Yeah. Uh, there's uh, there's so many things which are so appealing to learn uh, you know like anatomy and other stuff and uh, yeah so you, i think it's just really you want to just think about all those various things and think okay if i got really good in that how much would that help me if i got really good in that and that and, you know and then you you think about it you'll find that there's one or two things that really stand out as like yeah, if I really learn perspective well, that would change everything in a big way. You know, something like that, then you have your goal. You have your thing that you want to really concentrate on. And then time to put on the blinders and really concentrate on that thing for a few months. Mm -hmm. Like this is the 12th study, 12th week of studying um, various stuff with everybody. Right? So that's over two months already uh, and I have already learned a heck of a lot so it doesn't take much doesn't take that much time it just takes concentrated time if you sparse mm -hmm. it out like you won't really feel any of the results it's like watering a plant you don't water it on time it's not gonna really it's gonna grow all weird <laughs> if it grows at all yeah sure uh, listen, I have another question. Uh, I saw some interviews uh, you did with artists, and uh, you always ask them uh, 
if they could meet one person, whom would they meet? But I haven't heard you answering this question, so I'm just curious. Uh, who would be the person you would want to meet who is like no longer alive? Or... Like who would I want to thank or who would I want to meet? There's like, I'd like to ask two separate questions. One is like, if you were to thank somebody from your past, who would that be? Another one is if you could spend an afternoon with anybody. Yeah, yeah, that's one. <laughs> oh, okay. If I could spend the afternoon with anybody. Um, <laughs> I'll just give you the raw <laughs> thoughts in my head. Once I heard that, I was thinking, well, if I am not afraid of any kind of like things happening to me health wise, then I would probably want to meet an alien and talk with the alien and see what's what's up, <laughs> see what the world is about. Yeah. Um, I heard the interview with Greg Manches and he's like, ah, oh, yeah, if only we can meet an alien, so it's the most important thing. And then they say, yeah, this was good art, but we're in a completely different stage now, right? It was fun for a while. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Uh, another person I would love to meet. Um, I don't know. I don't know. People from the past, somebody I would love to meet is probably Bruce Lee. I would love to sit down with him and just kind of hear his stories, hear his, his struggles, you know, just being the first... Asian American to be really put into the spotlight the way that he did and the adversities that he had to go through to get to that place. Mm -hmm. um, I would also love to sit down with my uh, like great grandfather. I saw a picture of him. My, I was saying in a stream before that my grandma is 102 years old, <laughs> right? So my great grandfather, he was born probably closer to like the early 1800s, you know, so like he had the long, big, long braid, wore the robe, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> that would be interesting to kind of talk with him and see what life is like. I think I'd want to talk to people that aren't here anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day, family is the most important, right? So, Yeah. Well, thank you for your question. Yeah, thank you, Bobby. Awesome. I do want to get to one of these questions that are in um, Slido. This one's from Anonymous. Can Iranians take part in Lightbox Expo? Because I want to take part in Art Station Challenge, but sadly I was not allowed because of my country. Well, fear not, my friend. If you're watching this, you could totally be a part of uh, the expo because we're going to have lots of areas all over the internet where you can watch. Yeah, you know what? And if you're able to actually access lightboxexpo.com, if you could go there and you could see stuff, I'm pretty darn sure that the day of Lightbox Expo, you'll be able to also attend. We are not we're definitely not banning any countries. Everybody is welcome. No matter what's going on in your country, like artists are my people. So my people are welcome, you know, at this artist event. All right. Um, yeah, this illustration here is almost done. You know what? Let's do a fun question where I will I'll ask anything artistic do a demonstration. How about that? Does anybody have an art question in the chat here where I can kind of uh demonstrate? Anybody at all? All right, well, 
guess uh, I'll, I can throw one out there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, as far as your creatures go, they always look super awesome. And I know on Schoolism, there's the uh, creature anatomy class as well. But curious uh, as far as like your, um, it, you said it was like the dog mixed with the like the bird wings there. Uh, I saw it was originally the hippo type face. What what's the anatomy going on even with just him? Like how to just how yeah. what is your thought process to kind of dig uh, through that? Well, um so the thought process here initially I drew a couple like this is like my pig monster. Um and I think my line art. Oh, here's some fur. So the question is, sorry, the question is, um, how do I go from one thing to the, the next thing? Yeah, even just like combining different animal anatomy. Oh, uh, yes, I mean, anatomy. To make the weight look like, okay, yeah, that can definitely fly, you know, even though it's a hippo with wings uh, type look, you know, it somehow it still has that realism the it, the anatomy of it still pulls through for sure to give it that touch let me let me um just kind of break it down into just general parts here so we have a cranium well oh, this is a huge cranium cranium might be like this Okay, that's one fundamental part of vertebrae. Then we have the rib cage. So what does this rib cage look like? Not too sure, but it's gonna be something like this. And then we have the pelvic area. And then the leg bones might stick in here. It goes to a knee right here, it goes to an ankle right here goes to foot you can take any anatomy and like exaggerate it like as much as you want and yeah, that's one way what is that you can take the anatomy of like any animal and like exaggerate it as much as you want uh yeah you, yeah you can but like when you think about it it's like um it's not with when you compare the anatomy of a human to anatomy of a dog or the anatomy of a dog with the anatomy of a giraffe, isn't that also kind of exaggerating? Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, a, a lot of these things, they have huge similarities, right? So maybe let's just go through the anatomy of a person and try to create some anatomy for this fictional creature because who cares like this creature is completely fictional we could design anatomy however we want really we just got to think of the functions so the functions as we we're saying in the very very beginning of the stream functions for this would be kind of like hinges to move those arms around you want these uh these little paws to be able to rotate as well um, things like that. So we're thinking about all the different functionality. And then from there, we could think about the anatomy. So I'll try to like do this as much from like um, perhaps a beginner kind of perspective as I can. So as a beginner, we're definitely going to know, okay, well, there's going to be some holes in the skull for the eyes. We know that there's going to be a nose area of some sort right okay there's so there's that part um, it goes into a neck and we know from a human being we know from a human being that we have these connective kind of parts for the neck you know we know that um, from the shoulder we have a deltoid going to a tricep, bicep, forearm. 
to the paw, to the grabber. Uh, and then, you know, this part might look kind of horrible. It looks too much like a person right now. But at least it's creating anatomy that kind of makes sense to us. Oh, uh, Bobby, can I ask something? Yeah. Uh, am I audible or am I low or am I too high? Oh, I can hear you just fine. Okay. Um, uh, hi, you're doing great, man. And uh, I actually have a two-part question. And, okay. And uh, the first part, I guess I'll ask the second one first. Uh, I have been finding a lot of schoolism content and all stuff available online. And uh, I've been making the most use of it. Like, I want to be a concept artist and illustrator. Mm -hmm. Like the way Aitan Stana is, Shadi Safadi, and uh, Jama Jurabe, and all these people. Mm -hmm. You know, John uh, John Park and all these guys. And uh, if is it, do you think it's ethical, like, if I take the class and, like, wouldn't be able to get feedback from Nathan folks, but I can just, like, make the best benefit of whatever content I find? Uh, well, for me, I prefer doing the self-taught classes instead of the critique classes because the critique classes, there's a schedule. Um, so I like to take my time, even though I've done both. I like to take my time with uh, the classes. So I, yeah, I prefer the cheaper version, the self-taught like subscription version. Okay. Also, you know, it, it's very helpful to um, to view the the stuff with the feedback. You know, to see other people's assignments, see how they did things, how they uh, what kind of mistakes okay. they did, and how the teacher how they fixed them. Along the yeah. Yeah. And my first question is, I guess I have asked this like in previous uh, live stream, but I didn't quite get a proper answer out of it. So my question back then was, I have a pre pretty decent concept art job right now, like uh, the place where I'm working at. Okay. And I've been this for a while, like it's an internship and I like this place. I like the guys. They teach me where I want to be, like be the people like I want to be like. And... Uh, Sure, I want to take these learn squared schoolism classes and uh, I want to join an atelier, you know, like try freelancing and all different kinds of stuff. So I'm just really confused, like, what should I be doing right now? Should I take an atelier, like take a detour from my path, like right now? Like, remember that question, like a couple of weeks back, like a long term path or like something that would take me to my goal immediately right now? The person that keeps learning becomes a small, tiny, tiny little percentage of artists out there. And especially once you start working. There's something that uh, Craig Mullins told me a long time ago that was stuck with me, which was to incorporate exploring into your process. Because what happens, he says, is like, especially when you get better and better, you find all these tropes, all of these simple tricks and styles and things of representing stuff and doing things quickly. But then all of a sudden you stop expanding your way of doing things. You're actually narrowing the way of doing things. So he says that if a painting could take him, you know, a short amount of time, he'll ask for you know a bigger amount of time so that he has that time to experiment mess around with obscure programs i never even heard of this man is still like doing this uh and come up with all these new ways of doing things on a constant because he worked it into his you know procedure uh, that i found to be really awesome and I, I took that to heart. I'd do that as well. When people ask me a timeline, I go, it'll be this much time. And that's thinking about, okay, I'm going to take a day and a half to just mess around in all sorts of ways I'm not used to. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see here. How much time do we have left? 
we are almost done everybody so i hope you guys are finishing up your paintings and drawings does anybody else have a question on uh zoom here oh, hey. hi bobby how are you hi good <laughs> thanks i'm pablo from colombia hi pablo pablo <laughs> i have a question uh how can I organize myself or why should I think to start a personal project? How do you what? Sorry? How can I start a personal project? I don't know where to start or how to start or oh. what to do. <laughs> okay. I'm kind of lost in there. What what would you do you know what you want to do? Uh, I don't know, maybe it's why I'm lost, because I like a lot the environments and a lot the characters, so I would like to do both, but <laughs> it's kind of takes time. Okay, well, uh, characters or environments, let's pick one. Go ahead, pick one. Characters. <laughs> okay, characters. Okay, so we're going to start off with characters. Now I'm going to give you an assignment that hopefully will gel with what your objectives are. Okay, awesome. so picture picture this, Pablo. Um, I'm a, so do you know if you want to work in movies, games, uh, TV, animation? Games. Games. I like to work in games. Awesome. So picture this, Pablo. Uh, this game comes out. Is it realistic or is it more animated? is animated maybe more fictional i think okay whimsical kind of topics fictional kind of topics and it's animated yeah great um what kind of animation are you most interested in learning something that is more realistic like anime kind of stuff more like um disney pixar kind of stuff more like Spider-Verse, more like, you know, TV, television kind of animation. Okay, I know where you're going. Yeah, maybe more right. like uh, Halo stuff or space stuff. I don't know. Okay, Halo, space, great, great. Um, have you ever read the, the book Dune? No, I don't. <laughs> okay, well, you could just... That would be a great one. Or say you're to make a, a movie, Dune, you know, it's a science fiction movie or book. Um, do you have a science fiction movie that you love? Yeah, Matrix. <laughs> Matrix. Yeah. Great. Name another one. Um, I don't know, probably Alien. Okay matrix versus aliens you know like you're so you're a character in a in a simulation that's run by aliens and you gotta free your people <laughs> or something you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, yeah i understand yeah and you're just sharpening that that focus that's the thing that i've i've heard over and over again where some people they might feel like they've already gotten a focus but they didn't really think about things to exact amounts the more exact the more subtle details you know about your goal uh, the more of a chance that you will get there or somewhere very close right okay. like um i stink at fishing i stink at fishing because i don't know what i'm trying to catch so mm -hmm. i put in the same bait in the same place, I don't know. I don't know the difference between, right? But then I go with somebody that knows how to fish. It looks at the time of day, looks at you know the water and goes, yeah, we should go over there because that's where the bass will be and that's what I want to catch today. Okay, yeah, thank you, you see so what I'm much. Saying, right? yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe it's because I like to start painting and, and right away and then um, think, on those days, those things that you already asked me. So that's maybe why I'm lost in there. Pablo, take this week to think about the ideas 
that you'll be going for before you actually start painting and drawing. Okay. Thank you so much, Bobby. Think about some great ideas. Yeah, you're very welcome. Also, for everybody out there, yeah, that's exactly how we work on films and you know games and such. You get the stuff, the script, the idea, and then you sit there and you think about a bunch of cool ideas. You go online, you start looking around for other cool ideas that you might be able to work off of, uh, springboard off of to create something different. Right, so take some time to think about what it is you're going to be concentrating on so much. Desi asks in Slido, I wish you all the best for Lightbox. Really excited. When will be Ian McKegg's class coming to schoolism? I'm waiting for it desperately. It is coming. It's coming. Um, you know, we're just, we're working at, on it it is coming there is the footage we are just going through it and uh polishing it up and and everything we do have the raw footage uh i am hoping that this course will come out hopefully still this month or next month um, i'm also working on a course too so it really depends on which one gets done first that'll determine which one comes out first. Okay. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much done here. So thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. Everybody on YouTube, everybody on Zoom. Uh, I did want to mention again that the next stream is going to be, be a portfolio review stream, but I need portfolios to do so. So if you upload four pieces of art with the hashtag schoolism portfolio on Instagram or Twitter or something like that, I'll try to get through as many as I can. Okay, and that's going to be on Thursday, but you want to upload your stuff, post it by the end of tomorrow. That way I'll have some time to sift through. Okay, and that will be back on YouTube. So thanks so much for watching. And I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful day today. Take care, everybody.